Brothers and sisters, welcome to the teaching of God's word upon the Surefire Life Conference platform. The platform the Almighty God has given to us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. This is the basis for which we are here to learn of this eternal life and to make it available to everyone who cares to learn. The grace of God is free and available. But only those who apply grace get the benefits that the grace offers. I pray that the Almighty God will make every one of us to apply grace and get the maximum benefits of grace in Jesus' name. We have been studying the theme, the overcomers, the overcomers. And our theme today rose nicely upon that. In fact, we could have made this part of the overcomers uh, teaching where we stopped at part four. This could have very well be part five. Our theme today or topic today is the trial of your faith, the trial of my faith, the trial of our faith. And so in short, this could uh, actually be captioned as the trial of faith. And that is the truth. Irrespective of what you believe or what you hold on to, in this life, whatever you hold on to will be tried. You may hold on to um, your wealth, it will be tried. I was just listening to a um, message yesterday and the man of God was talking about somebody who was sick and doctors couldn't help the person. And the person was very rich. And so the person asked that lots of money be withdrawn from the bank account and brought to where the person was lying ill. And the person will be looking at the money and of course, the money could not. In a way, that was a trial of the uh, uh, trusts in riches. When I was working in the Netherlands, there was a time I tried to share this eternal life message with somebody who shared office with me who was a, a Dutch indigenous, And so he told me that he was not interested. He didn't uh, care about that. And again, I reminded him of this, that it wasn't um, a compulsion anyway. And as I always say, it's not about religion. It's about the truth. And it's about your own life. So I told him what was his own uh, back, back, backing, what is backing his life? What does he put his life trust on? So he can also share with me because I am out of law trying to share what I know. It's like a teacher that knows a subject would want to teach others. You can decide to learn or uh, refuse to learn. Um, so he just uh, said some things about himself and all that. Then I reminded him that the important thing about life is that whatever you hold on to will be tested. It will be tried. Life is a tester. Put it that way. Life carries with it tests. So you remember when we studied the overcomers, 
said there are battles. So I told him that just permit me to just say a few words in case a day comes that life tests you to the point that you remember and say, that thing Pastor Godwin said, let me look at it. And so I shared a few words with him and said, just as uh, the, I have said now, that everything you hold on to in this life will be tried, will be tested. And the day that test comes, it will reveal whether what you hold on to is able to stand. That's why they talk about standing the tests of time. That Jesus Christ has conquered all and has given us every provision to stand in every trial and every test and be victorious. All it requires is for us to come to him and have faith in him. So brothers and sisters, the trial of your faith, the trial of my faith, the trial of our faith, the trial of faith then immediately throws up two words, trial and faith. Those are the two key words for us to look at. Let's take our texts. I'll make a few points and then we'll take our Bible readings and we'll go through our usual structure and some questions to study deeper this subject. Our text is taken from the book of James, chapter one. Verse three, James chapter one, verse three. It's actu actually verses two and three. Yeah, I just kept it short, verse three, because that's where the trial of your faith is derived from. So I will read uh, James chapter one, verse three from King James Version. And then I will read James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 from New King James Version. I read James chapter 1, verse 3, our text. You can look at it, King James Version. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith walketh patience. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith walketh patience. Now here, that trying of your faith. In New King James Version, I think I just do that first before I read the two verses together. New King James Version says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. The testing of your faith produces patience. So that King James Version makes us to understand that trial there and the testing uh, is the same, is the same word, right? I've also looked at uh, multiple versions. You look at the English Standard Version, you look at uh, the NIV, uh, you look at uh, the uh, Amplified, all support the New uh, King James Version or go with the New King James Version. English Standard Version says, for well, you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. If when you look at the two verses together, then something is introduced. So let me read the two verses, both King James Version and then New King James Version. He said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. I've read verses two and three together. Now, if you read that in King James Version, it says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall, when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith walketh patience. It is the word temptation that I was trying to bring out. So 
I think it's important to bring that out. So from this text, as I said, keyword trial and faith. That's again what our focus is, the trial of your faith. Faith is the key weapon for us to overcome. You remember we read in the book of 1 John, 1 John uh, chapter 4, I believe I said, and the Bible says, uh, this is he that overcomes the world, or oh, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So faith is very important. We have been studying the book of Hebrews, and from Hebrews we've entered James, and James we've entered uh, Peter. First Peter and Hebrews chapter 11 spend time emphasizing faith because it is very, very important. So the trial of our faith, the testing of our faith, or temptation. This word often are used interchangeably in the Bible, but you would see when you're looking at a new King James Version and English Standard Version and the rest of them, they try to make a little distinction between temptation, which leads to sin, and trial of faith, which is testing of your faith. But in both cases, you will see that it is, at the end of the day, it is about our ability to stand by faith, to overcome trial, testing, or temptation in whatever way, in whatever form. So that sets the background uh, so that when you hear testing, trial, or temptation is used, you will be able to understand the difference between these three. The other thing that you will also hear as we go in the course of this study, let me make it, bring it up, because we'll read the two scriptures and these are the things we'll also deliberate on, is the word chastening, chastening, which is discipline, right, or rebuke, or uh, correction. Sometimes this is also being confused with trial, trial of your faith. So trial of faith then is the testing of your faith, my faith. And the Bible makes us to understand here that the testing of our faith produces patience. If we read all the way from verses two through four in the New King James Version, let us all now read because we're gonna take our study now. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So, uh, four, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So there is a purpose for your faith, my faith, to be tested. Indeed, a good purpose. As we can see there, it says, knowing that, verse 3, the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work. So when you, we allow we, patience to work in us, it says that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I've made the point around the separation between 
trying or trial of our faith and temptation. And it's very important. We are going to come back to that. But if I just give it up front so you can have the, 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 the um, anchor point. When we talk about trial of faith, most times Job becomes the live example. Job becomes a live example. But I, we will see in the course of this study that Job is really not your live example. Yes, Job is a live example of a man who was tempted, but you and I don't sit in the space of Job. We are sitting in a totally different space. And that's why it's important to understand temptation and trial and the provision of God for us to always be victorious in the trial of our faith. So let's take our Bible readings. Um, I've just read James chapter 1, verses 2 through uh, 4. And let the second person read for us. The same James chapter 1 from verse 12 to 15. James chapter 1 from verse 12 to 15. The next person will read Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 4 to 13. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 4 to 13. Let a very fast reader please read those two. Uh, two people, two people, please. The first person, James chapter 1. Yeah, go ahead. And read James chapter one. verse 12 to 15. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will, be, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Verse 13, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. That each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Verse 15. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. So you see here, the Bible makes it very clear that God does not tempt with evil and does not tempt anyone because temptation leads to sin, leads to death if one falls into that temptation. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4 to 13. Who's reading next, please? Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 4 to 13. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be wary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have, that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your dropping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Thank you very much. So we have heard the scripture there now. Talking about, if you look at verse 7, it says, if you endure chastening or discipline or correction 
or rebuke. Those are similar words. God deals with you as with sons. But what son is there whom a father does not discipline, chasten? So our two main scriptures, we have read them. And we want to start our discussion. First, as we always, we are here looking at what, we are focusing on the what, but of course, there's no boundary. What, what does trial of faith mean? What does it mean? Why? Is this important? And how do we apply this in our lives? In the course of our study, we'll go in between, right? As, uh, as, uh, as, as, as we often uh, do, and as you know, there is no clear boundary in the course of discussing what, why will come in, in the course of discussing why, uh, how may come in, okay. We also, so we want to start by first understanding those separation, trial, testing, temptation. But I've just said sometimes tempting uh, is also used as a trial or testing. But here the Bible in, makes it that clear distinction about temptation. Of course, we know the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the trial of faith. So let's look at this and so we can understand what trial of faith is. The second part is we've also made the distinction here clearly about the rebuke or discipline of the Lord. Because that's another space that gets confused with the trial of faith. So that will be our first discussion. Differentiate, giving some examples on this, of these three broad headlines of testing our faith, temptation, and discipline. All right, the lines are open and any other a point that has come to you in the course of the scriptures we have read. When we've dealt with this, then we would um, address a few more uh, questions around the trial. We don't want to isolate and then focus on the trial of faith, the testing of faith. What is it? For what purpose? That is what purpose? Why? And how do we apply? this to enjoy the overcoming life and the uh, eternal and abundant life that God has given us, because that's our portion. The lines are open now, so feel free, open the line and make your contribution. Question is testing or trial of faith, temptation, chastening or rebuke or discipline, what is the difference? What, and can you give example, practical life example? You can also draw example from the Bible if you have. All right, who wants to go first? But let me again clarify, I've already told us that trial and testing are the same and often interchange with, in some translations with temptation. Um, so trial and testing or trial or testing, whichever one you choose to use is the same. Temptation is different. Though sometimes the same word is used to mean trial, but you should understand when it is used in the same sense and when it is used in a different sense. It is that different sense of temptation on its own that we're looking at now. So we're looking at testing, temptation, the testing or trial, anyone you choose to use, temptation and uh, chastening or discipline, whichever word you choose. So those three groups, 
are what we're looking at and say, what do you see as the difference from the scriptures and from what you know? And give some examples. Okay, who wants to go next? What comes to your mind? Trial, testing of faith, temptation. In the context of our lives as believers, as Christians, is the comfort. Can you give me some perspective, your perspective? Um, Pastor, thank you for the opportunity. But as a, um, you have said, we have studied overcomer. So overcomers mean we have to overcome challenges, be able to win in a difficult situation. So those situations that we won, I think those, that is trial. Uh, testing. If when we read uh, James chapter 5, example of the uh, Job was brought up. Chapter 5 is 10 and 11. He said, brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job or Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. So when we talk of trials and temptation, I think Job, is always one of them that will come into our mind. We know what happened to Job, even though Job did not know where his trial and testing was coming from. Job persevered. So I think uh, I will always use that as an, as an example of testing and trial. Things that will happen that will test your faith your dependence, your reliance on God. How do you hold on to the end? So we learn from Job example. I don't know if that is <laughs> what you were looking for. Thank um, you very much. You've made a very good point. You have in the course of that also hit the definitions. You see, things, happenings that will test our dependence and uh, faith, which is why we're talking about trial of faith. Faith in God, yeah? That's really what we're talking about. Um, yes, and Yes, Job indeed is a good example, like I have mentioned earlier, that Job um, went through suffering. Yeah. Job was tempted, and Job overcame. And as the scripture sh shows us here, he say, remember what his example. And I did also mention, I said, however, we would learn in the course of this that we sit in a different space. And you have also alluded to that, saying that although Job didn't know, he didn't understand. So there are a whole lot available to us now that were not available to Job. Uh, Job didn't have the blood of Jesus, just to again start addressing this as we all come to, where we will look at it in detail. He, he, he didn't have the sacrifice that Jesus has made, the redemption, all that. And like you said, he was also not uh, um, acquainted with the source that God does not tempt with evil. And so evil cannot be from God. So, and this is where I'm really trying to get us to 
come to appreciate the difference that if there is a clear difference, so we know when things happen, where does it sit? And we know how to address it. So indeed, Job's example is good, very, very good. It's something we're going to look at. You know, at times if you read Job's example, you can almost, for some people, they can even become afraid. But I want to tell you that you sit in a totally different space. I sit in a totally different space today from where Job was. So trial and temptation are, while the words sometimes are used interchangeably, that's the key point I'm trying to make. There is separate level of understanding that we need to have about temptation. Because as we have read, temptation leads to sin. And God does not tempt anybody to fall. So we also then go to understand the sources and cause of temptation. Sister, thank you very much. You've made very good points. And you've thrown quite a lot uh, out already, which we would bring together to make this clearer. Do you have anything to add? Maybe in my response, you probably have some more thoughts. You feel free because your line is still open. Okay. All right, Brother Sonny, if your line is uh, free now. and Okay. Trial or testing of faith means those external challenges that we encounter as believers on a daily basis. Okay. Great, Sonny has sent a detailed note, so let's read his note. The trial or testing of faith means those external challenges that we encounter as believers on a daily basis. Job was tested and tried, yes. On the other hand, temptation appears to be those things that has to do with our senses, what we see, hear, feel, etc that may take our focus away from God, leading to sin and death. Excellent point. Excellent point. This is very good. So in the space of this point that we are making here, you see that sometimes temptation is used in even the space uh, of trial, yeah? And when that is uh, uh, um, uh, in the space of testing, testing our faith, yeah? But whether it is the senses level, as our brother has defined here, or the um, evil, evil uh, level, as Job case, case, the consequence of temptation leads to sin. If one falls, one fails. I think it's good to hold that um, delicate point. So the Bible says God does not tempt with evil. Let's go back to that, James, and deal with that and delve into that. In James chapter 1, let's look at that 12 and 13 again. It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Then the uh, continuation of that, 14, talks about, the sources of temptation, which is what our brother has captured about um, our senses and our, the lusts, the lusts of this world, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life brings temptation. The second is for us to know that temptation also comes from the devil. The temptation also comes from the devil. It comes from 
opposition. It comes from forces. So bunch it all together. Trial, temptation. It's about our faith. It's about our faith. So you can really then come to that point to really say, whether it's trial, whether it's temptation, it is about our faith. Our faith needs to stand, our faith needs to be firm, our faith needs to be strong. If one falls into temptation, which is evil, whether it is sin, at the end of the day, uh, I'll, it will take that person away from God, and it does require repentance. But on the other hand, trial, a failure in trial that is simply a test of your faith requires a learning and a repeat. I know this may be difficult. Let me try to put that again. Why I'm trying to make this distinction so we understand. So let's um, look at um, some example. For example, let's go back to that Job's case. Let's go to Job's case. Job chapter one, right? Job chapter one. Let's go and start there very quickly. I think Job is the clearest example. So Job was a righteous man. And what was the temptation of Job? And also uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's go to verse 6 straight away. He said, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge round about him and... You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land 11. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. You've seen the difference. 12, and the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now, what did the devil say? God curse, curse, uh, curse Job. But God does not tempt with evil. Can you pick that? So God said, Satan, I permit you then to do whatever you can. But I decree you know, the devil will always obey the boundaries that God has set. That's the point here. Don't touch his life. And that's why I'm saying that you are in a different space from, the, from where Job was. Because there are so many boundaries God has already set. God has set the boundary with the blood of Jesus. He has set the boundary with the name of Jesus for you to cast out the devil when the devil comes to try you in any way or in any form. But here it was. And he has also set the boundary with the Holy Spirit, the one who reveals the source of everything to us. So uh, Job was tried, indeed tested, indeed tempted, all the words you can use together. But you see the foundation, I mean the ultimate objective was for Job to sin and fall out of favor with God, to fall out of grace. Do you get that? That's the point. Now, you can take that and also look at our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. 
The Bible clearly says that he was tempted. Just again, understanding Matthew chapter 4. From verse 1, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. So you can say Jesus was. So you've seen the temptation. Like our brother said, luring him to sin against God, using the pride of life, or the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The same way Adam and Eve, or Adam was tempted. Yeah, Adam and Eve were tempted. Yeah, because the devil actually spoke to uh, Eve. Making the things of the world appealing. So here, Job, though he went through suffering, the focus of the devil was for Job to curse God and fall out. Here, the devil tempted Jesus Christ, so Jesus will fail the same way Adam failed. But thanks be to God. Look at it in verse, verse 9 and 10 and 11. Uh, let's start from verse 8. Again, the devil took him up. The devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. 10. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. 11. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So, behind trial, testing of our faith, temptation, and I know somebody would say, I'm not going to make any effort of distinguishing. I just roll all the challenges together. That's fine. It's a good, simple way to approach it. Or oh, whatever it is, I shall overcome by faith. Because the result of temptation is sin. And sin takes me, takes you, takes us out of the grace that has been given to us. But of course, there is a way of recovery, and we will come to that. Just a few more scriptures, and then we will. A very typical trial, trial like example that we can look at. It's also that of Paul. Paul. So Paul said that a thorn in the flesh was given to him. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 9. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 9. And the agent of Satan to buffet him. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Seven to nine. He said, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to perfect me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in witness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in I take pleasure in my infirmities and in reproaches and the rest and all that. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You look at this again and put it all together. Is this um, in the space of chastening, is this in the space of 
um, uh, trial, temptation. You see, anything that is the devil, that's, that's the distinction, is between trial and temptation. That's the formula. But when we come to the law, the law disciplines. The law disciplines, which is correction. And the law does not tempt with evil. The devil tempts with evil. So too, the other question we will look at then is, from all that we have read, what are the sources of trial? What are the sources of temptation? Chastening, we have clearly seen, is of the Lord. The Lord chastens the one whom he loves. Is a correction of the Lord. Is a rebuke of the Lord. But when we come to trial and temptation, you have those two parts or two levels. From the devil is always to pull one down, to make one to sin, to fall out of favor with God. And that's why we have to stand firm in the faith. I read our last scripture first. Uh, we talk about First Peter. So First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. We'll start reading from verse 6, rather. First Peter chapter 5 from verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Did you see that? Eight, our nine, resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Let me summarize. As believers in Christ Jesus, born again, born of the Spirit of God, children of God, the adversary walks about looking for whom he may devour. And he tries to do this to hinder God's glory in our lives or to bring one out of favor with God through trial and temptation. God does not tempt with evil. And from the story we have had now, the access that the adversary uses to tempt us is through, as the Bible has made it clear there, our desires, our desires. In those three categories, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, it's always what the enemy uses to tempt us. On the other hand, the adversary also tries to create challenges, obstacles, difficulties, as our sister has explained, happenings to test our faith, our dependence on God. So, Faith is the weapon by which we overcome. And patience, while faith is working, is required to overcome. We're going to look then deeper. I've already put them in the various forms. So now that we have this introductory, as we always do, we're going to then structure structure it, um, and then look into um, what is the purpose of trial that we were reading in uh, James, and who is the one who tempts, who is the one who brings trial, so much so that James said we should count it all joy. Look at it again, my brethren. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. 
But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So what is the purpose? You can already see that it brings victory. It's the only opportunity for victory. But this victory at the end of the day will bring us to that crown, will bring us to that glory. So this study is about uh, waking our consciousness to the reality of life and the victory that is available to us. This is where we will pause and we will continue in the next study. And so we're then going to look deeply at faith. Now that we have touched on the various aspects and uh, areas of the trial of faith. Whatever you hold on to will be tested in life. Whatever you hold on to will be tested in life. And we as Christians, so trial, temptation, they come to tests what we hold on to. But it is not the testing, it's not the temptation. It is what we can lose. It is the end game that is very critical. The end game to lose one's salvation, but God will not allow any temptation like a, a doctor read for us last uh, Sunday, that is greater than us to come to us. So we need to be rooted uh, in our faith. But let me then uh, wrap up with 2 Timothy, please right, read, read, open 2 Timothy. Why you see me still trying to you know, hit on this level of trial and temptation. I've tried to make the, the two separate points around where one fails and then has to repeat. You keep repeating till you, you, you learn and you have victory versus temptation, which is evil, that one fails and then falls out of favor with God. Like you saw, using the Job example, the devil's objective was for Job to curse God. So the suffering was for Job to curse God. And if Job did that, that was the contest. God has said, Job is righteous. He depends on me. He trusts me. The devil said, okay, let me test him. That already tells you who the tester is. That's why we must know our adversary. Sometimes these things happen like normal small human interactions. When you read Job's example, you will see they were all physical events, but behind the scene, the devil was working. Yes, yeah, so uh, sin is orchestrated by the devil. Again, it looks like normal human things, but anything that will bring you out of favor with God, is temptation of the devil. So we look at, uh, whereas there is that small element, small element where it is about the degree of your faith, which you need to continually learn. It is for learning and you continually learn as you grow in it. So let's look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. I read from verse 20 of verses 20 and, and, and 21. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master's use useful for the master's use. 
I thought this would be the last scripture, but as I'm reading this, it has triggered another scripture in my head, please. Let's just uh, check that. Um, it's Paul that said, I believe uh, in Corinthians. Let's look at that. He said, he has built, he has laid the foundation and anyone who builds upon this foundation, there is no other foundation that is laid than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. And anyone who builds upon this foundation, and then it says that every man's work shall be tried. That's the scripture I'm looking for. Yeah, every man's work shall be tried. And if you build with gold, silver, and all that, when the work is tried by fire, it says, depending on the type of your work, your work will stand. So this is what we're talking about, is that whole space that we have to be conscious of, we have to be aware, the testing of our faith. The origin of it, the source of it, what causes it, and why and how we must respond. That's what we look, we want to look at. I think I'll just leave it here because we will take it on from that um, testing of our work that I've just mentioned and uh, look at the other questions. Okay, let's just soak it in and we'll. We'll deal with it in the next study. Let us pray. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we hand over this teaching to you. Lord, we ask that you continue to give us understanding. You continue, Lord God Almighty, to help us to stand steadfast, to depend and stand firm in you, not never to waver. And Lord, we pray in any way that there may be any trial, any temptation, give us victory. Let nobody amongst us fall, but help us to stand and to continue to grow in grace and increase in you, Lord Jesus. Father, help us that all of us will fulfill your will and your purpose for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen.